So I've just finished this lino cut um, and I wanted to talk you through some different things I'm going to be doing with it. Um, so rather than just make one print from it, I'm going to, like one edition of prints, I'm going to do a few different things. Um, first thing I'm doing is printing it onto some textured paper, which I thought I'd talk you through. And then I'm also going to be printing it onto notebooks. Um, I'm going to be printing it in gold ink on black paper, which I thought would be quite interesting to see. And I'm also going to print it because it's sort of like a right to the edge pattern. I'm going to do a big print where I do four all together. Um, so in this video, you'll see me do all of those things. Um, first things first, I am going to be printing on the textured white paper. Um, so that's something which I would, the, the paper I'm using is this, it's called Cardi, it's an Indian um, rag paper with this lovely deckled edge, very textured, it's good for watercolour and all sorts. Um, generally, uh, you to do lino printing you want to choose a, a smooth thin paper, so this is completely going against that. Um, you know, where, where with a textured thicker paper, you risk the lines not coming up as smooth as on the thin paper. Um, and, and of course, it's much harder if you haven't got a press, it's much harder to make a print that way. It's it'd be it'd be really hard to make a print by hand on paper like this. It will just look so light. So um, this might be more helpful for people who do have a press at home. Um, but yeah, it it will be it will be cool to just see how it looks on paper like this as well, um, rather than on smooth paper. It does look less crisp. I've found even using a press, but that's kind of part of the appeal. So I've just inked this up. Uh, another thing I'd say is I used a little bit more ink than usual, which is to allow for how much um, you're you're not just hitting the surface of the paper, you've really got to get into the grain of it. So I rolled out my ink into a nice fine, um, you know, like nice solid tacky film, inked up and then I did it about twice more rather than just once. Um, so let's see how this comes out. Um, the other thing I did for anyone who's got a press like this, where it's a roller press, these thing, these these uh, uh, knobs here adjust the um, pressure, and when you turn them to the right, it makes the roller come lower down to the bed, so you've got more pressure. So I did that. I gave it a twist, um, sort of like half a turn more, so that when you turn it, you can really feel um, feel the resistance. And then if you've got a relief press at home. I'd say, yeah, again, you're just, um, with that, obviously, you're using your kind of human strength to make the print. And I'd just say, press it that little bit more, um, quite a bit more. Think of that paper as being like a sort of a sponge, and you've just got to, like, really um, get into all those fibres. So I'll just whip this through. Um, you might be able to tell just from me turning the wheel in a sec once it meets the block that I'll be putting, yeah, it feels harder than usual a lot of the time when Hannah's doing her prints. She's just spinning this wheel round with ease and that's because she always prints on nice fine paper and she uses like lots of ink and so it doesn't need much but I, yeah, have whacked the pressure on a lot in order to allow for the type of paper and let's have a look see how it looks so yeah this is it i think it, it it's a really nice effect having a lino print on paper like this it makes a nice change but yeah from from printing a good few of these now i've realized that this sort of thing is unavoidable but I'm choosing to embrace it. It makes for a different look. It's less clean looking, 
but it's nice it's sort of rugged and each one's coming out a bit different and some of them are really clean and black um so yeah this is the print on textured white paper stay tuned to see me printing on other surfaces so i have just finished inking up my um lino block of foliage um in gold ink which is very exciting here you can see how nice this gold ink looks it's so shiny and when you see it on the black paper you'll you'll see even more the impact it makes um so i use this gold um ink that completely oil based ink by lawrence's and here it is on the inking inking plate it's just so so shiny and when you see how it comes out on the paper you'll appreciate even more um how, how nice the metallic effect is and i am printing on this lovely um black somerset velvet paper so yes let's spin this through the press and see how it looks okay let's have a look and see how this has come out on the black paper So nice, gold on black. Hopefully you can see it okay in the light. Let's have a look, find a good angle. It's really, really nice. I'll um, show you properly how it looks in a sec once I get my uh, uh, iPad out of the camera stand. <laughs> um, but yes, one set. Yeah, so here we have gold ink on black paper it really is lovely it's just the opacity of the ink on the black it just makes such an impact i love it so yeah that's um the second thing i'm doing with this lino block gold ink on black paper so i'd already done black ink on on white textured paper um, this this paper is also thick, uh, like the white one before, so I'd say it also um, benefits from using a press. It would be quite hard to do this by hand, but generally um, might just be useful to know that that Lawrence Gold Ink is just brilliant. If you ever do want to do hand burnishing at home with a gold ink, I would recommend that that gold ink over any other one. Um, so yes, yeah, stay tuned for the notebooks. Okay, let's have a look at the notebooks now. So I've just run one through the press and see how it looks. So much the same in how it goes through the press, apart from the fact that because a book is thicker, um, I have to just adjust the pressure to make sure it doesn't press too much, given that You've got something about that much thicker going through and as you can see I've just laid the book flat across the lino block and then I just have to carefully peel it off there you go so I've got two books drying over here but I thought I'd also just show you a finished one that I did the other day um, where it's been able to be folded and everything. So I've got, um, yeah, front cover and back cover. And also I have made these books um, a limited edition because of the fact that I've used the exact same design for prints as well. And what I did, oh, that one hasn't got it, bear with me. Only stamped one so far. Just did this at the back, just as a little way of making them a bit more special as well. So yeah, that's um, all the printmaking I have to do with that particular lino block, I think. Uh, here I have um, had a bit of leftover ink, so I printed one sheet 
uh, on, a, on a sheet of black paper, one lot of the gold ink on black. This is just on some black sugar paper, just because I thought, oh, maybe the repeat pattern thing, um, do one big sheet all with the same design on. But yeah, that's a bit of an experiment at the moment. Um, but what I have done is the black ink on white paper, the gold ink on black, and the notebooks. Um, so yeah, great use out of one lino block. And by making the um, notebooks limited edition, that sort of helps keep things authentic. And you know, when you're making an art print of something, I think it's nice to um, know that the print, the, the block isn't being used like over and over and over again. Um, so yeah, it's making me feel like how long that lino block took to make was sort of worth it. Because I think all three of the things look good. Um, so yeah, when you're making a lino cut, remember that there are all sorts of things you can do with it. Thanks for watching.